is all you dancing about? Now the mic is on. Hold on. Do this all over again. Oh. Don't do it again. Oh. Hold on. Really? Whoa! 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 Hold on, I guess. So, hold on. Hold on. Calm down. All right. All right. All right. Yay! 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 It worked that time. Pushing buttons. All right. Let's just calm down here for a moment. Let's figure out what we're going to do. You know, I can make sure I avoid avoid all the Nerf guns coming at me and making the whole team pay attention to me. But, you know, being from California, a little sweaty here. Got to start to get some probiotics in me. Uh, probiotics. Take your probiotics, kids. All right. Let's get these down. We're testing for crashes. Hmm. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get those in there. Let's get to a nice zen space. We'll start talking about things. All right, so to start, it's another week that we've been doing this crunch time, working on all the beta one stuff. Uh, right now, I've got the little website uh, with our video going up on there, our 500 player battles, which are just awesome. Uh, hello, everybody. So what I want to start off with is just kind of checking with everybody. This is uh, Tidings with Tyler, where I'm going to do a little bit of a check-in with you guys on what's been going on, what's going on. Uh, we had a really, really great le week last week. Uh, we started off really strong. Uh, we delivered our user stories. Uh, I'll go ahead and pop that in chat. And if for anybody who doesn't possibly know what user stories are, I don't know who in the world doesn't, because uh, it's clearly something we're doing that's amazing. Um, we have a whole lot of stuff that we keep uh, you, our backers, informed of what we're doing. Typically, our numbers range anywhere from 40 to 60 of our old cards, 10 to 20 for our new cards. And last week, we put out 88 completes on our old cards and 59 completes on our new cards. So. Clearly, we're doing something right. We've made a lot of progress in a lot of different areas. Uh, we're continuing to do the same thing this week. Uh, what I want to make sure is kind of go over a couple of the cool highlights that we covered last week. Um, check out the um, cube shots that we updated. I'll go ahead and pull those up. Really cool things with cube. If nobody had actually seen any of that stuff from last week, um, we also... Um, updated a whole bunch of new art on the website, some new uh, shots for the media screenshots, uh, added in some shots for our current build. Everybody's seen this one a, a couple of times, the Pine Forest. Um, They're complaining about your resolution. My resolution, I can't do anything about it. It's already high. Okay. Maybe it's my screen size. I actually have a very big monitor. Uh, next time we'll, we'll do, look, I understand you guys really wanted to see the whole buttercup horse thing in a higher def, and I know some of you want to save that for later, and I'll try and make sure and record that. We'll get that out at a higher resolution next week. Um, so let's keep going over the couple of things that we tackled last week. Um, we One of the cool things that we got in, Andrew did a whole memory debugging tool that was really awesome that a lot of the engineers were very happy about that really lets them focus on work instead of debugging, finding bugs, anything having to do with memory. As I understand it, engineers don't like working with memory and figuring out where it goes and why it shouldn't be there and why it's still there. Uh, we started working on uh, more realm-specific armors. Uh, one of the things we had planned on for Beta 1 was probably just a simple uh, uh, one set of armor for each uh, realm, and we've actually expanded that into two sets of armor for each realm. Um, and each I mean, one of these things are very different. They're very realm specific. Yeah, yeah, uh, you can see any of that information. If you go to the media page, oh, go to just okay. oh, I okay. you meant that concept in mean, the screenshot yeah, section. Concept art. We have tons and tons of stuff in here, all about armor. Um, putting out a lot of really cool things. All of this. Go look at the tasty goodness. A lot of you have seen John streaming. Uh, this is our one of our TDD armors. Uh, got a lot of love and attention. And he has fingerless gloves. So if you ever see uh, 
Scott throttling John in the background is because he has fingerless gloves. Um, we also are really focused on classes right now. There's a lot of different moving parts that have to do with classes, and one of the things we've been working on is a ability import tool uh, that'll really help out uh, the designers to be able to make changes really fast. We don't have to worry about a lot of editor stuff. Like we said, we're kind of keeping it simple, very focused, knowing that we have a very big project and we've got a lot to do, so this will really help the designers just put all of this together in a much quicker manner. Um, we've been doing um, items and weapons, uh, armor, uh, um, our armor and weapons can have stats now. Uh, one of the really cool things is you can pick up an item and put it down on the ground, and you can put it in your inventory and put equip it. So that's all new stuff that we definitely needed. Um, it's kind of one of those things you sometimes take for granted when you get a very polished game and you don't realize the amount of time and effort it takes just to pick something up off the ground. Um, one of the things I mentioned before was that we have item persistence, so you can put something down, log out, and it will stay there, which generated tons of interesting design conversations on Massively OP, which was really interesting. Um, Rob is going full bore on buildings. Uh, we shoehorned a whole bunch of buildings. Like we said, we we're always trying to stress our system, so we have a whole lot more buildings in the game. Um, any of you who have seen in the last week, you'll notice that the world is completely populated in uh, building plots. We've also tried uh, different sizes of building plots just to see uh, what our bounds are right now. Um, we have um, working destruction and stability uh, right now on a flat surface, and we're moving, with that said, into this week's highlights. Why are people messaging me? Um, this week's highlights. Buildings continue. Uh, one of the changes we did is we wanted to make sure that we were conveying visually a very rough pass of uh, blocks that are damaged so that you would know that you can focus on a specific part of a castle wall or something that um, was actually previously damaged. So now you can actually walk up to a plot, take the plot, it's now your plot, you can then build on it uh, with our uh, building system, it's really quick. You can build up a huge wall, put the whole thing together, and then I guess you could hang out in your castle for a while and not do anything, but that's not our game. So then you would traipse off to someone else and go destroy their stuff. Um, one of the cool things is now you can see all the destruction. We've got um, some simple uh, VFX sounds, uh, visuals on all of this so that we can actually convey this information to you. Um, stability is actually moving along. We're actually, Rob's working on taking the platform out of the buildings so that you no longer have to have a flat surface and he's working on generating um, height maps to calculate stability so you'll be able to work on uneven surfaces. Um, working on groups right now. I know you guys are really interested in these 20-man groups. Um, when we get all the eight-man groups figured out, we'll have a really nice set of five-man group mechanics to work with all the three-mans. It's going to be really good. Um, JB's uh, working very intelligently on this to put a lot of the information on different servers and do some kind of networking wizardry to make all of that work. Uh, one of the things we're trying to do is always focus on performance. Um, Brian, progression system. Um, we were starting to work on the first pass of progression, so you'll be able to progress your abilities, simply said, without throwing too many details at that, right, at this point, since it's in its infancy. Um, Bull and Ben behind me continue to iterate on the Ability Builder. Um, as Bull said, I think, in his stream last night, um, <laughs> ben, ben speaks Ben, and Bull speaks Bull, and they're trying to communicate and get all this information correctly into the game. Um, ben always has a kind of this face because he's always working on all the um, ability systems and trying to get the first pass of everything based off the tech we have and um, it's, it's actually really interesting to watch. Uh, another thing that's moving along, uh, Mark has basically been quiet next to me for the last couple of days, uh, if not probably week. Um, really focused on the crafting system. He's very happy with not only his spreadsheet's capability to do what it should do, but also the colors of the blocks to make it very easy for everybody to understand. He specifically said to me this morning, it's very pretty and easy to understand. And it's, I think, maybe I use the word sexy. I don't think Mark used the word sexy. That's not really, no. and that's not a word he uses. He would have used some esoteric comparison to some TV show I haven't seen. Um, so he's been working on all that and is very happy with the progression he's made on that. Um, <laughs> 
big balancing act. I don't envy working in spreadsheets to that extent all day long, uh, but clearly the man has a passion for it because he will sit for hours and not move and just get up and get a little bit of decaf coffee, which is another crazy thing about him. Um, the cool thing is, is he's at a point where he's handing off and discussing all of this with other Mark. So maybe after this uh, stream, we'll start calling him Marky Mark. We'll see how long that lasts. Um, it just so ended. It just ended. You're 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes so, now, we didn't even make five so, minutes. Mark is working with Mark to get um, the beginnings of the crafting system and so we're all actually really excited to kind of see that. I'm personally excited to get the tail end of that, which is what the visual elements, the logistics of figuring out how we're going to build all these things, how we're going to do all these different materials so that you can run around in different pieces of armor of different quality, different visual cues that clearly look like they're made of different materials. I'm also very excited about doing um, not only coming up with the names, but the visuals of some of the fantasy stuff that we're going to have to figure out for materials. You know, we can always call things, you know, dragon bone and uh, iron wood. Iron wood. Yeah, iron wood's a good one. And, you know, unobtainium, whatever we want to come up with. That's kind of one of the fun things to come up with some of these visuals and also stick within the scope of what we've said for what each realm visually represents. Um, let's see. More armor weapons concept art is going on uh continue to go down weapons or i'm sorry armor we're actually pretty close to finishing up the first pass of these sets of armor um we're going to do i got a little surprise that mark requested that we're not do we talk about it in the stream the uh tdd armor ideas for materials Yet. Okay, we're not going to talk about that. I'm going to let you guys be surprised about that. Uh, basically, if you go back and look through some of our concept pieces for the TD armor, you might have an idea of where I'm going with that. But I'll let you guys figure that out on your own. Um, in the meantime, um, materials are um, continuing to be um, adjusted on all the armors to basically convey uh, the characters and the realms correctly. Um, we're also doing, right now we're doing a, a pass of weapons. We're not going into uh, very specific um, realm-based visuals for weapons right now, mainly because everything that we create now would have to, to have a very big audit with the new lighting and um, uh, material system that's going in. So what we're going to do right now is put in some temporary models, so don't be alarmed when you see those. But what they're going to be used for is being able to switch between stances. So if you have different weapon types, you're not always going to see the same swings. You're not going to see the same stances as we put them um, in the game. And that's something that is pretty cool and not a lot of people do with uh, MMOs, you know. Okay, I've got an axe. I got a sword. Now I got a dagger. You know, it's the it's the same swing. So we're really excited about getting all of that stuff in. Uh, Scott, however, if, if you don't see me uh, in next week's stream, it's because Scott might have come over and choked me to death for all the weapons I handed off to him. And that's primarily because we're not doing... Uh, Every realm doesn't have the same version of a one-handed axe. Uh, Ben's been really diligent on making sure that we all have different visuals for the realms, even at this early stage. Uh, so different sword types for different realms. Um, even just the idea, of, like I said, of an axe or a dagger, they all look different. And that will continue to expound upon and we'll actually make uh, really cool looking um, ideas from that. I think on the last stream I showed some pictures of uh, an axe, uh, which was a good indication of where we're going with our new lighting system. Um, you can actually find that axe right here. Pull that up. I just realized it was there. So this is a small image uh, where we basically took the concept of different materials that were crafted to create a one-handed axe. And in this case, you can see the different metals, the different uh, colors on the bands. Maybe that was different leather for the handles. Um, and all of this will then have stats, uh, as Mark has talked about in a lot of the crafting. Uh, duck uh, streams, which will be really cool. Um, I also like these daggers. Those are really pretty. The obsidian dagger, the copper gold dagger, the iron dagger, and the steel dagger. Um, and that's not me being literal, that's just me. I think that's what they look like. Um, what else? Uh, we've got a lot of new concept art going in for um, the patcher. Uh, we're going to keep that all a secret. You don't get to see any of that right now. Uh, Michelle has been very diligent working on all of that for the last week. And I found that if you don't say anything to her for an entire day, suddenly there's like three or four more pieces of really cool art. Um, so when the new patcher lands, you'll get to see some new art off of that, some new splash screens, um, some really pretty stuff. And we're looking at taking some of those images to the next step, uh, which I won't also talk about. 
Um, Valks. Uh, we started the first pass of Valks, uh, getting them in. We're not going, probably you're going to see them in a rough state uh, when you do see them, simply because we haven't finished all the textures and everything, because we want to wait once again until the lighting and um, lighting tech and the material tech is done. Uh, so you have to be able to jump in and play as a Valk soon to add to our Luger pans. Um, we have picks in progress. Uh, Sandra is right now doing the tattoo designs for the picks. Um, so that'll be really cool. Um, the Place of Power, Mark talked about that briefly. Uh, over the weekend, Ben and I spent a little bit of time working on the Place of Power. Oh, that's the wrong Maya. So to start with the Place of Power, last night we were joking around and we were talking about, I think Genesee was relating to me a story. So this is a castle tower for anybody who was in IT, maybe a couple of alpha players saw this or you would have seen this on our screenshots. I built this thing as kind of a temporary uh, siegeable castle just so that we could have a play space to run around in. Um, sorry, wrong pop-up. And apparently what happened was this door caused a lot of frustration for players. Apparently, there was a whole contest of trying to get up to the door, to land on the door. What's in the door? Can you open the door? So, apparently, I was inadvertently evil to a lot of backers who were trying to leap up and land on this thing. So, of course, that just made me realize that there's an opportunity there to do something similar with the rough of the place of power. Where's the place of power? So... Uh, the other day, Ben uh, spent a little bit of time working on this. Um, basically, it's a layout. This is typical of uh, video game development. You'll do kind of white boxing. You'll just use a bunch of squares and everything to really get the look and feel of things, or mainly the spatial layout, and then figure out how it's going to play. Um, so I real quickly just threw some textures on it so it wasn't blue. Um, and then, of course, every fantasy place of power needs a bunch of floating rocks, right? So we took some rocks that we had and I just placed a couple up there. The first iteration of this looked like that. It was just a couple of rocks up there. So clearly we needed to make this more interesting to players. And so I added something that looked like a couple little steps. And then we realized that Mike has all different kinds of cool VFX and I have things that look like treasure chests. So when you guys are able to look in the game, you will want to look up here and there's a nice little treasure chest. There's nothing in the treasure chest, but it has VFX and a shiny light on it. And apparently now everybody is trying to leap up onto it. So of course we, Rob and I were thinking, and we took that to the next step and we put a funnel of VFX down here and Rob said, oh man, we got to launch people off the bottom of that. So luckily, Rob was able to find a bug <laughs> with uh, launching people through the air that he was able to fix last night. So if you go and look in the build right now, um, this place of power is something you can run around on. You can launch yourself up, and we've got people trying to leap up onto this thing. And I, I wanted to take this one step further and put out a document saying that, you know, whoa, we actually did a physics simulation, and we really... Oh, hold on. <sighs> got to take my probiotics. Feeling weak. I thought we'd put out a paper saying Rob had done a physics simulation, you know, using player collision, and yes, this is doable, but that was probably already going to be mean. Um, so let's move on from place of power. I'm not going to pull up the game right now. I found that OBS does not like, likes taking up all my computer's memory with the game, the editor, and everything else I am running. Um, another cool thing that we got in, um, one of the things that makes the world feel a little bit more alive and something we're moving into is more environment work. Um, things that move, tertiary elements, lighting changes, things like that. So for a while now we've had um, a broken lighting and VFX placed in the world and Tim magically found it the other day. So I've got uh, Mike working on different types of... V is that mine? Uh, different types of VFX. Um, to kind of put a little bit of life in the world, little motes of air. We were talking about Legend. I don't know if anybody's seen that. Uh, that Ridley Scott was known for just throwing piles of feathers and crap into the air and choking his actors. Um, so little motes of air, little wisps, uh, fireflies, flying moths, anything that kind of just brings a little bit of life to the world. Um, one of the things we're looking at is that when the realms uh, take over their terrain, 
um, that all of this information is going to swap. So the goal is to put in a couple of things that like even our VFX are going to change. So the Wisps, I think right now we'll put them in for the Vikings. We've got some Fireflies that we'll put in for the Arthurians, and I've got these moats of stuff that'll go through the air for the TDD, and that'll look really cool. And then we took some of that concept to maybe Ash or something really cool. Some of you saw Michelle's concept work in the Periscope app yesterday. Um, that was just kind of a work in progress, coming up with some ideas to do for this place of power to make it look really pretty. Um, and we're gonna put some ash and cool stuff flying around in there. Uh, so that's coming up. And all, of course, all of that is gonna be part of the work I'm doing right now, which is to put um, all the realm variations together of the pine forest. Uh, if you look at uh, my previous stream, uh, I pulled up some trees, showed off different uh, types of trees. Uh, you can see our concept art from different um, updates that shows the um, collection of what each realm is going to basically look like. So we're going to put all of that in. Um, and it's funny because right now the engineers are just basically chasing down a couple of bugs. Um, and I know what's going to happen. I'm going to throw in all this pine forest stuff, and it's just going to cause more problems. And I'm, like I said, if you don't see me next week, it's because either John throttled me or one of the engineers came over here and was like, why did you do all this art? So that's going to be really cool, and I hope you guys really like it. Um, let's see. Another thing. Uh, I have a new artist who's going to be joining us very soon. I'm not going to talk too specifically about her because I want to let her introduce herself. Uh, we'll probably do an update with her, um, get her a little bit of screen time, and have her maybe do some live streaming, show you some of the work that she's actually been doing in the background. Um, let's see. That's basically the gist of what we have going on right now, uh, unless I've forgotten anything. Um, one of the things I actually really liked, so what you guys can't see is the absolute mess that's on my desk. And I've seen a lot of people do this what's on my desk thing. I really think it's fun because I actually have a lot of fun things on my desk. So I need someone to ask me what's on my desk. Nobody's asking me what's on my desk. Okay, I'll just show you what's on my desk. This, which is very pretty. Where's my stream so I can see that you guys can see it. This is my alien queen bust. She guards the side of my desk. And one of the reasons I was actually really interested in this project was the part of the concept of the deaths, because I've always liked Giger's work. And when Mark just kept saying the word Giger over and over, and adult themed and everything for the depths, it's very easy to see why. Here, I'll reach over here and grab the other one. They guard both sides of my desk. Why I was interested in doing some of the depths artwork. Um, there's also the giant pile of post taxes paperwork over here. Gotta have your probiotics. Make sure you have those. And there's paper over there. Gotta make sure you're able to change your lights. My phone, my laser pointer. This is the annoying way sometimes I get a hold of an engineer. Or Scott. Oh, I got him. See, it works. Um, that's it. That's basically the what we were doing last week. That's the what we're doing this week. Um, we're definitely going to have another update. As Mark uh, mentioned, we're going to do more updates uh, this week. We've got more live streaming tomorrow. Uh, you can check the schedule for that. Uh, so if you guys have any questions based on some of the things I was talking about, go for it. Um, not going to take too many questions. I've only got about five minutes here. And please do not ask me the, the number of people that are going to be in a group or how is backstab going to work? And yeah, 20. 20 people in a group. I've said it a million times, 20 people in a group, and when we get all eight of them in there, it's going to be fantastic. You're going to love these five mans. When will we reveal more about the depths? Uh, definitely, we got to get into beta. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to get into before we can actually get to the depths. Probably around the time we actually start concepting it. Uh, it's going to be quite a while at this point, simply because we've got a lot of gameplay that we want to get in and test all the gameplay. So once we actually have the depths, and then we'll probably do exactly what you've seen here with the um, place of power. We'll start white boxing it, and then we'll start revealing a bunch of different uh, really cool concept art. 
<laughs> I'm not prepared for questions. Can I get 15 more minutes? Um, CSE, will CSE take an official stance on being anti-Donnie? No, if anything, we've just been pro-Donnie with the fact that we've given him something to bang his head against. Alien aliens or alien resurrection? Alien, in all honesty. Aliens was really cool when I was a teenager, and maybe that's because I had more testosterone in me, and maybe I've just calmed down and I really like the subtleties of alien. Oh, yeah. This magazine is for you. Mark's given me this magazine. This was on his desk, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you just saw the trap you stepped into. Yeah, who put this it was, there? This, this was, this was not, there? for some reason, Mark got Glamour Magazine. We have no idea why. And he's, he's, he's taken the fifth. I have no idea why. Yeah, Alien 3 just skipped. Warbands, like in Warhammer Online, you're going to have to wait for any information about groups. Like I said, we're working on 20-man groups. That's the focus. And then we're going to do the 5-man. But only if the 8-man doesn't work. 7, maybe? I'm sitting in a game that has been out for three plus years with a VFX stuck on me. Can you confirm that CU won't have these kinds of silliness, or at least not for long? We will most definitely have that kind of silliness for quite a while as we work through all of this uh, alpha through beta and get all you guys into tests. So that, that will definitely be there. But hopefully when we get to a point of polish, we'll get all that stuff out of the way. And I hope that's your only complaint at that point, not the size of the foreman. What? Why does the place of power have four bridges? Shouldn't three figure more so in the game? I think once we get a little bit farther along on actually using the place of power, that's going to be a perfect question to ask Ben. Um, I completely bow to Ben's and Mark's wisdom over game design and space uh, for players to fight in. And right now, uh, we'll just make it pretty. I do like this concept. 11 man with a couple on the bench in case of injury. That actually works with our body part system. Oh, I think I skipped that. Uh, one of the things that's in right now that you can test is body part targeting. So when you build your abilities, you can actually say, I want to hit a guy's arm or I want to hit his leg, which actually is pretty fun because if you hit his legs enough, your character just slows down to a trudge and then all the melee characters come and jump on you. Uh, I don't know what these places of power will actually do, but they will definitely look awesome. I think they look awesome already. Those are some sexy squares. Oh, I like this. They, trust me, the indicate four bridges does not mean four realms. That's not that's not the indication. There's no there's no sneaky thing there. Oh, I mean, you just saw me ride in on a, a bunch of, on some coconuts and make a fool of myself. Yes, this makes other people who are not as confident as I am a little bit uncomfortable. That's why I get the hate mail every once in a while. Can you kill the bridges in pop? No. Not at least right now. We're, we're basically going to put the place of power in and we'll see how it works. Um, it's a very fun idea for later, but certainly not a beta one idea. What, oh, someone just came in late. Uh, what is this place we see on the screen? That's the place of power uh, mock-up. That's basically a white box for which is in the game on Hatchery right now and will eventually be something you'll want to fight over once we actually put mechanics on it. Character age progression. Will it be in beta 1 at some point? Not in beta 1. Uh, a lot of beta 1 is really focused on gameplay. I've got... At some point, at some point we'll do it, but not at the start. Uh, right now what we're working on is a lot of the really hard things. That's I can't reiterate that enough. Anything you see us doing is the hard stuff. Anything you see us not doing is not as hard as the other hard stuff. So we're always going to focus on the hard stuff. We're always going to stress our systems. And we're also going to put the stuff in that needs the most testing. So all the combat, all the abilities, the beginnings of classes, 
all of that stuff takes a lot of time uh, and effort to just test. We've also got the um, terrain system, uh, the building system, stability and destruction, um, even groups just testing that out, getting players going in and out on different servers. And there's a lot of tech that is really difficult that we're doing. And the hope is you guys are going to enjoy it when we get to the end. And hopefully some of you have been enjoying it now. From what I've seen, a lot of people are enjoying it. And I love running around and actually being like, holy crap, I can pop a hole in a building and it starts falling apart. Uh, are you going to work on fauna design too? Yes, we will definitely work on fauna. What we, Like I said, we want to make sure that the world looks alive. Not only will we need creatures in the game simply for uh, crafting mechanics, uh, which haven't been completely figured out yet for you know what fauna and what materials, but uh, we'll also want things just to keep the world alive, just simple things. You know, when I, uh, Actually, when I worked on uh, Tiger Woods at EA 2002 or something, uh, one of my jobs was to make... Uh, Canada geese, deer, birds, squirrels, and it's kind of funny how just like a little critter running around in the woods uh, really adds to the believability of what you're running around in. So yeah, we're definitely working on that, and that will dovetail into different sound design for different realms and different environments. We'll dovetail into the VFX. Um, I'm really hoping it's going to be amazing. I think we can totally do it. And I'm actually excited working on it right now. So like I said, if I'm, if I'm dead next week, it's because I put in all the pine forest stuff and the engineers are upset at me. Okay, I'm going to start closing this down. Uh, I'm going to answer one more question. I do. I am not sponsored by the probiotics company. Why work on that? Oh, there's a good question. Why work on this power place when you are in a hurry for beta one? Simply because the place of power is part of what we're trying to do for beta one. Uh, I'm going to have to leave you guys off on any kind of design questions for what the place of power is going to do, mainly because this is really, really a first iteration. Uh, the actual design of it is going to need some vetting and hasn't actually been determined exactly what we're going to do. Uh, you guys will probably know once we do and put it in and start testing some ideas. Uh, one more. So I'm just going to answer uh, yes to both of these, and then I'm going to end this, and I will talk to you guys next week. Uh, two last questions. Will you have enough manpower to do quality and design of the depths, both visually and mechanically, if you start that late, especially having in mind so many other things yet to be done? And the other question is, are you planning to hide interesting things within designs for players to discover? For example, something underneath this place of power, which is hard to get to. Yes and yes. Uh, I think we're going to be fine figuring out this. One of the good things is, is finding good artists. We've already got some good artists. Uh, is relatively easy. And in outsourcing, I've, I've got several years' experience doing that personally uh, to just work on quantity um, as well as quality. So, And one of the things I am extremely particular, please feel like you're in a safe place here. Everybody feel comfortable. I really focus on quality when it comes to the art. I will go in and pick at little, you know, one triangle, two triangles. Oh. Um, one of the things that we'll do is make definitely get a lot of um, quality in on top of our quantity. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for quite a while. I've done a lot of, I've got a lot of experience doing outsourcing, um, and one of the things we just really need to do is provide a lot of information for um, our outsourcers so that we can get that quality. And on top of that, the depths is a great place to hide things, just like the place of power. One of the things I've been doing is focusing on um, getting some little minor things, getting some little minor things into the um, world. Uh, actually, let me see. I'll pull one up. One of the issues that has come up is with a procedural terrain system, you're going to repeat a lot of different things. Um, so to break that up and make the world seem a little bit more alive, we're going to put some time into some other types of objects that, that look uh, a little more unique. So a simple concept for that would be a lot of straight pine trees. Oh boy, it's too busy here. People keep pinging me. Um, jump back to you guys. Um, one of the things that we want to do is uh, put a little bit of time into unique assets. So for right now, we did a real 
quick pass of the pine forest, which includes a lot of relatively straight trees. One of the things we'll do is little groups of trees, things that bend, anything to kind of break up the visuals in the world. On top of that, one of the things I want to do is get in, let's see, props. Let's pull up something fun here. Give me one minute because I wasn't planning on pulling this up. Where did we put it? Hmm. All right, we'll go to the editor. So this is one thing you, we've seen a lot today. There's a lot of work going on uh, with the build, and this thing just patches continually all day as we iterate upon it. It's been quite fun today, uh, mainly because last night was kind of like, oh, there's so many things to fix. And then we, when we started to see the end of the tunnel, it, and it, we got more out of it than we wanted, uh, which I think Mark is going to talk about at a later point. So once again, whoop. Is the new artist part of the stretch goals from Wildback? No, the new artist is not part of the stretch goals. Um, the artist is someone who's been doing some work for us uh, in the background, and we're bringing her on, and she will be here behind the camera, and uh, she's very talented. I'm very, very happy we grabbed her. Uh, let's see if I can find this thing. Working, loading, what's it called? No. Weasel. Ugh, die here. Prop. What is this thing called? It's really cool, and now I can't find it. Ritual. Uh, I may have to punt on this. So, I'm going to punt on that, and it'll still have to be a surprise. Uh, one of the things that we've done, uh, like I said, is just try and make some unique objects. And they're really supposed to be unique objects. It's not like it's a tree, but this tree is bendy. It's going to be uh, something that you guys can find in the woods. Um, I'd like to put some later gameplay mechanics on it, but that's all just feature creep. Uh, I don't want to you know, commit to anything like that now. But I would like it to be for the, the explorer types who like just going to run around the world to be like, oh, I went up and down a couple of hills. They look roughly the same hill. And oh, then I found this other thing uh, sitting in the woods. Have you guys found that thing? You know, what is it? What's the point of it? Uh, some of that also helps support lore. Um, I'd like to do some unique objects that are based on some of the lore stories as well, because there is such a depth of inf of depth and breadth of information uh, in on the lore stories and tons of ideas. Hey, there's our cleaning baby. She's very nice. Um, and we'll get um, a lot of really um, interesting objects in the world. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, feel free to let me know in forums, uh, anything you've found in other games, anything you guys think is cool to find out in the woods, in the desert, underwater, whatever. Just fun ideas. Uh, it's always something that I'm looking to do. Cross. Cross, were you answering a specific question? Someone asked Oh, oh, so Cross is basically a trooper at this point. Um, like I said, we're focusing on a lot of the really hard things. And one of the difficult things to do while working on the hard things is not to work on all the easier things. So right now we've been using a... Um, an older VFX system uh, that's basically a bunch of camera facing sprites um, that limits our ability to do a lot of the really flashy stuff that we want to do eventually. Oh, cairn stones. Yes, we've made cairn stones. I have some of those. We're going to stick those in the world in the little mushroom circles and things like that. Thank you for reminding me. Um, let me jump back to something that's a little more visually interesting on my screen. That's not it. I have a lot of programs running usually. Um, Oh, this is cool. Um, 
I totally, oh, the VFX system. So one of the things we're going to do at a later date is actually audit the entire VFX system and give it a lot of love. And we're going to give Cross a whole bunch of new tools uh, to make a lot of really cool things that are more in line with, uh, you know, basically a modern VFX system. Um, so don't worry for right now. A lot of this is placeholder, and I can honestly tell you, having worked with a lot of other artists and VFX artists, Cross is amazing at getting what he gets out of the limited system that we have. Um, I actually found, I remember when I was talking about the place of power and putting um, stuff on the place of power and trying to make it so you could see the little treasure chest I put up there, I found out that typing in the word test in the particle uh, section of the database brings up all these really interesting things that Cross was like, eh. I don't think it looks good enough. And of course I pull it up and all of us late last night, it was like 1130, a whole bunch of us were like, that's amazing. So right now I think I found uh, something called, here, I'll pull it up. Okay, Cross, please don't hit me after this because I think this is a really cool thing and I want to show people. Is that okay? I want to show them the test in them. So like I said, next uh, week I'll work on my resolution if that's an issue. That's the same thing here. That's really Test. Particle effects. Uh, hmm. Something's not working. Oh, we're getting exceptions on something. Let's try this again. So, like I said, this whole thing, this patcher that we've got up here, wait, you see the new one. It's going to be very sexy. And like, I, I really mean there's some cool stuff that, you know, not being an engineer, I might say, oh, that's really cool. I'm, be, you know, amazed at it. But even the engineers are like, oh, that's going to be so handy. All right, let's see if I can pull this up. Particle effect. Okay, what type of structures do we want? That's where it's engineered from that. Exactly. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, so this may not be... Yeah. There it goes. Came up. Test. So this thing was just awesome. The minute you see anything that says test anemone, you gotta go open that up. Come on. There it is. Like, that's just awesome and uncomfortable. It looks like some kind of Cthulhu thing or something. <laughs> uh, someone's asking how I get that editor option on my patcher. Unfortunately, you don't. It's a very fun tool. So that's the anemone. I mean, like, what are you going to do with that? That's like something we should put out of the depths. And then, like I said, we get some more tools on the VFX system, and things like this just get more awesome. And you have to understand, what this is, is it's literally, you know, a camera-facing camera facing sprite. It's always facing the camera, right? So there's a whole lot of math that has to go into figuring out a trail of these things, and then the trail of these things moving um, on top of each other, and then slowly fading out. So I'm constantly impressed with what Mike thinks is not very neat. Um, I'll show you another cool thing. Uh, spectrum discs. Come on. Bubbles. Uh, I'm talking. Let's see what pops in. Watching my feed, which is what you're not supposed to do. Tyrael's wings. That's actually a close approximation with this stuff. Let me see if you, anyone's asked any questions while I've totally digressed from my stream. Well, let me say, we could delve in, like, if this so bubbles. So actually, it's interesting because one of the things, Mike, where's your? Um, I talked about mods. Did you name that new one mods? So I've got the mods lamp. So this thing I actually love because I actually used it on top of uh, candles, on top of lamps, and this is when I talk about little movements and things that make the world come alive. This is such a minor, tiny thing that Mike can put together in like five or ten minutes and it brings so much life to the world. So I'm trying to make sure we add little things like this as we go. And the Wicked... What's your... Um,
What's the, the cool particle effect of the smoke and stuff that's on the ground? This thing's wicked. So we all love this thing. Um, one of the things I want to do uh, is do a quick pass on maybe like some swampy area or something, and this would be a fun thing to put in the swamp. And then we set this up to time of day, and it comes up in the morning or it comes up in the evening. That'll be really sexy too. Ooh. Um, so yeah, part of the, the magic here is since these things are always facing the camera, is to fake the fact that it isn't. So sometimes these things are like a flip book. You've seen those a pile of times on the internet anywhere. Uh, it's basically an uh, animation basic. And so Mike might make a flip book of a turning rock and then as it flies through the air, you'll see it actually turning, but it's still camera facing. It's just one, one poly with a particle. Someone said you're brilliant. Okay, just making sure. Thank you very much. Mike needs some love. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Like I said, I'd like to pull the place and power up, but I think we're waiting on doing that at this point. Uh, I wish I could find my model. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay. So trying to put a little bit of humor into the game, uh, trying to give something for people to explore, um, just something that you guys don't always know about when you're running around the world. Like I said, I'm trying to pay a lot of attention to just making this feel a little more lived in. But like I said, also finding fun things. So this is a stump. It's a tree stump. I'm going to look over at Mark. And it's absolutely awesome. It's probably the best tree stump you've ever seen, and if you saw this in the forest, you'd be like, eh, and you'd probably keep running. But there's one or two people who are going to do this. And they're going to look down in the tree stump, and there is a little white mink sitting inside of this. I just know that some people, like myself, are going to be happy finding this one little random thing in the world, and maybe we'll put some animation on it. I don't know. Maybe we could... You get a little buff when you fall, go buy it for the mink. Things like that would just be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not saying we're doing that. Uh, we're very early on, but for right now, I want to make sure that things like this are just fun stuff you find. I still like the stone wall. The stone wall? The wall stone. The walls come up from oh, what we have on me. Oh, yeah. I, I can pull that up because a lot of people don't know about that one. Um, uh, and this actually was uh, created by the new artist that's coming in. I just gave her a little bit of direction and she went with it and it looks amazing. And she did it in a very quick period of time. Um, one of the things Mark was just mentioning, something a lot of people didn't see, you know, I, I like working here because unlike with a bigger company, you get to stretch your wings a little bit more creatively and that goes for all of us. So Mark had a random idea a long time ago. Let's see, wall. Hopefully not 200 things come up. Um, okay, I think this is it. Let's see. Okay, so this is the rock wall. Everybody has seen this thing probably a thousand times in our videos. And one of the things we put in there was really subtle. And if you look at the side of it, do you guys see it? Let's see, I'll make sure you guys can, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out. There's a darker shape in here. And the idea here is this is a wall you would pull up to block things, right? Anybody coming at you or anything. So it's actually a silhouette of Wiley E. Coyote on the back of the rock. Now when we launch, we'll have to take Wiley E. Coyote out. But for now, it's definitely a fun thing that we get to kind of stretch our creative wings and do fun stuff. Um, so as I've said, like a lot of what I do is producer slash environment artist, sometimes office admin, sometimes office mom. Does anybody have any questions? I mean, I'm focusing a lot on environment right now. Are there any kind of environment type questions? Uh, anything you guys are interested in seeing when it comes to, you know, cool fantasy environments? Um, please provide feedback. Let me know what you think is interesting. So I think that was just stupid. I broke myself. But I, I went back in the second time.
I thought I saw a horse. There's a battering ram. We got another very talented artist make for us. And I'm not in any way trying to employ any kind of game mechanic by showing you this thing. This is a placeholder object that when we actually figure out the design, we'll be able to amount, you know, turn this into something that actually works with gameplay. How much environment is going to be manually placed, or you asked by I'm going um, The terrain editor allows us a lot of control. We have a whole list of other controls that we want to add to the terrain editor um, that will reduce the amount of hand placement. Um, some of those things are very small details. Um, grass growing in a specific direction or on an angle, like ferns coming out one side. If I make a fern asset, I don't know half of it's going to be in, a wall, in the ground. So little things like that we want. Um, that'll certainly make uh, hand placing a lot uh, easier, uh, less necessary. Uh, we're, my goal would be 80-20, 80 80% 20, um, 80 um, with the realm biome, uh, or the train editor just filling everything up, 20% going in, putting in unique objects, maybe moving some things, auditing the terrain, um, and then probably what's going to happen after that is I'm going to want another 10% at a later point just to keep making things pretty. I can see that happening. Um, Weapon effects. Uh, Mike has plenty of weapon effects, and actually what he's working on right now is making sure that we have some placeholder assets, uh, VFX assets, as we put in um, the different classes. The class ability list is really long, so I've basically got Mike preparing for um, anything that we might need. Uh, if I type in flame... Oh, duck pedestal comes up. Why does duck pedestal comes up? Oh, yeah. We put fire on a duck pedestal a long time ago. Um, we actually now have um, a real torch for all you Dayak fans uh, who've either played Dayak or have been in our game. You'll know that hitting T for the longest time would uh, light a light over your shoulder. Uh, so now that we have items and we have the VFX working, we now have um, an actual torch that your character will have in his inventory. You have to click on it and it binds to his hand and you run around and shine light everywhere and that actually is really exciting because I want to come up with the concept of different types of lighting and things like that and in no way am I committing to anything like that as I am not the designer but I like the idea of different colored torches that do different things oh yeah um, you guys saying um, hidden things that basically put things where players don't have any idea that there would be something behind it. Definitely something we want to do. I mean, my example there was random things you might come across and find interesting. But yeah, we, um, yeah, maybe I just have a, a, a mean sense of humor to screw with people. But we actually had, um, we did a, you know, four-walled uh, castle for early testing quite a while ago. And for some reason, one of the wall segments didn't have any collision in it. So a bunch of players figured out that they could run through this one piece of collision. Things like that that aren't game breaking or you know have anything to do with uh, design or balance. Things like that are a lot of fun. Oh, I didn't know I could walk through this. And look, there's a little you know area in the woods that I didn't know existed. Things like that would be a lot of fun. Um, one thing that annoys me in games is grass uh, appearing and popping into existence pretty close to the character's field of view. So if you go in the game right now, you will see that. Our field of view is actually quite far, so a lot of games you'll see it popping fairly close to you. Ours is, I don't know, we're at like 50 meters, 60 meters, uh, where we're kind of popping grass in and out. Um, we haven't optimized that. Uh, we're going to be optimizing that. And one of the things we can do with the train editor, which is actually quite intelligent, is to put some grass at a distance and then add grass as you get closer. So you don't see an entire pop. You see a more subtle, more of it coming in. And that's one of the things just artistically, if you'll see that in some games where they add instead of just, you know, it's, it's none or all. So that's one of the things we'll definitely be addressing. Probably not in the beginning of beta one. Jump in, get the lights built, jump in, please, hatchery, run around, run around the uh, place. So, the cool things continue to go run, on. Run, jump, die. The graphics motor seems capable of doing lots of ambient interesting movements without any big performance peak. Well, this thing you showed. Was all the test things you showed in physics. Um, everything for physics is all server side. Um, you can, all your characters have mass, all your characters have collision. Um, 
all your all the trees, all the rocks, your projectiles have collision. This is one of the things they didn't think we could do. Um, I, we have done that. We it's been in there for a long time. Um, usually physics is done uh, client side and then sends information back to the server to let the server know what's happened. We're doing this all server side, which makes uh, anything having to do with collision uh, to cheat practically impossible. Um, I'm only going to say practically because there'll be someone out there who might figure something out and we'll stomp on him. Um, but yeah, all of this is stuff that nobody thought we could do and we've done it. Trees be choppable. Yes, you are going to have to be able to gather resources. Uh, Glow, yeah, Glow is on the um, near-term schedule. Um, I'm not um, suggesting it's going to happen right away simply because there's a lot of other things. We're changing the whole material and lighting system. So Glow may be with that or right after that. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but yes, we're biting at the bit to take advantage of that. Uh, bright lights in the distance. Uh, who's this? Logamos. Yes, we are definitely, I definitely understand the concept of there's something out in the distance that looks interesting. I'm going to go exploring. I definitely want to do things like that. One of the things that I was so happy about was when we fixed the VFX and lights in the terrain editor was being able to just put some little points of light out in the distance so that when you're running through the forest, you'll actually see some interesting things and be like, what's that? I'm going to go check it out. Um, I, I like the idea of, you know, during combat in our game, uh, you know, maybe you've lost arrows or spears, being able to find those things, um, you know, maybe you find something magical out in the distance, anything with just little lights and stuff would be, you know, I don't know, from an artistic and gameplay perspective, a lot of fun. Will we have a tree falling animation? Uh, we haven't exactly figured out uh, what we're going to do for when you chop the tree down. Um, that ranges from simple to complex, and we will see where we land on that. But it, nothing's been decided yet. Uh, yes, we are planning on making dark areas of the game. Um, however, that's going to be a lot of tuning. Uh, we've already spent time figuring out like how dark night is supposed to be. That's going to change. If you jump in and you're like, wow, this build, the nighttime is so dark, don't assume that it's going to stay that way forever. Um, but beyond that, uh, one of the things we did with the TDD uh, Pine Forest is I made all the trees a little bit wider, and the idea is to kind of darken that up and let in less light. Uh, so when the new lighting system comes in, the hope is that when you're in the TDD Pine Forest, not only are we changing just cosmetic ideas, but we're also changing how the light interacts with it, how you interact with it, how you feel walking around in it. If you feel the same walking through the pine forest or any biome that has swaps, um, we, we haven't really accomplished our job. So it's 5.58. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, if you guys have any questions about what we did last week, what we did this week, um, the size of groups. I'm totally willing to answer the size of groups. I will go on record and say that it's going to be four or five, maybe 18. What's the matter, Michelle? Oh, you're, yeah. You're, you're clicking, click, left, click. Were you right clicking? Yeah. That's the old way of clicking. Yeah. Now it's dropping. Yeah. Dropping items dropping. is in the game. Oh, you. You get all your Michelle, yeah, who's very focused spell. on art, as she should be, just learned that you can... <laughs> so she can drop items, and the first thing everybody here said was, now I can go pick up and take all her stuff. Are there plans for non-instance cave dungeon areas you can find in the world? Is there any dynamic terrain function for this? Um, some of that hasn't really been decided. We've talked uh, briefly about uh, mines, uh, but I, we haven't gone into too many details on this. Uh, four or five or maybe 18. Okay, so it's six o'clock. I appreciate you guys uh, having the patience through my silliness and the update. And uh, we'll probably go a little bit shorter next time simply because uh, this time I think I got excited showing off some VFX and some of the things that we were doing right now. Um, I will do my best to keep you guys informed and cover everything going on. Um, I really appreciate this project. And I am personally having a lot of fun, and I've got a great team, and this guy who sits next to me is a pain, and I'm learning a lot.
and this is a lot of fun, and uh, I'm really looking forward to putting all this together. And I'm really looking forward to you guys having a lot of fun. That's going to be an awesome reward. I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm going to sign off, and I will see you guys in a week where I will be running around on other streams. Um, talk to you guys later. Where's the off button? Okay, don't hit the mic button.